Hello, and welcome to the opening show of our primetime series, What Would You Do? If you see something and you think it's wrong, do you step in or do you step away? What people say and what they do aren't always the same. That's why our hidden cameras are so revealing. In our first scenario, we weren't sure what to expect when our opinionated man behind the counter meets the Muslim woman in a headscarf. Deep in the heart of Texas, at this little roadside bakery, bigotry is being served with a coffee and Danish. Sir, I have a question. No, ma'am. We don't serve Muslims here. I'm sorry? This is America. We're at war with your people. I don't know what you think I am. I'm just trying to get an apple. Well, you're a terrorist is what you are. So Excuse me? you got to take your business elsewhere. We don't serve your kind here. The other customers at this bakery near Waco seem to hear everything, but they barely look at the Muslim woman, even when the language is tough to take. Get back on the camel and go back wherever you came from. Sir, I'm an American. I was born and raised no, in No, you're country. not. Americans don't wear towels on their head. Muslim Americans say these are words they hear all the time in all parts of the country. But here at the bakery, what the customers don't know is that this Muslim woman and the man behind the counter are actors. The bakery is working with us, all part of a primetime hidden camera experiment on prejudice and patriotism. Please take your business elsewhere. Am I asking too much? When no one even tries to help her, she makes a direct appeal. Sir, would you mind ordering me an apple strudel? That's, that's why I'm here. I can give you the money. I'm no problem. That's not a problem with money, man. Uh, sure. Please no, sir. Huh? I'm not going to let no, you have a job. But when he gives her the cold shoulder, she finally just leaves. You could have helped her out. You could have spoken up. Why not? Let me speak up for her. Well, if he tried to do some harm to her or something, then I would have. But why not try to set him straight? I really think that a person that owns his own business should be able to say who they sell to. She's not American. Others seem to agree with our actor as to who's an American and who's not. Is it all based on the way we look? I'm an American citizen. I just would like an apple suit off, please. Well, I'm sorry. Then why don't you dress like an American? You're this so American. This is for religious purposes, sir. And I, I don't think you have any right to say anything. So I'm religious. I don't wear, you know, Halloween costumes around. I mean, am I wrong here, sir? Not me. I run no. my business the way I want to run. This customer is adamant that the man behind the counter is doing the right thing. But the fact is, it's against the law to deny service to someone based on their race or religion. My name is John Quinones, and I'm with ABC News. What did you think of what you heard here? I didn't hear anything racist. He told her he wouldn't serve her. Well, he can say he wouldn't serve you if you come in here barefooted without a shirt on. But she wasn't barefoot or without a shirt on. Well, she wasn't dressed right. What do you mean? If I was running a place, I'd do the same thing. You wouldn't let Muslims shop at your store? I sure wouldn't. We Why never not? expected customers to be so candid. How do I know you don't have a bomb in there? Watch what happens this time when, once again, our Muslim woman is denied service. This is not right. And again leaves. I mean, we reserve the right to not serve. That's right. Sir. That's right. That's, uh, you know, I, I appreciate seeing that. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that. He not only commends the man behind the counter for his discriminatory behavior, but he gives him the thumbs up, not once, but twice. Good job. All right. Okay. As he Thank leaves. So can I talk to you, sir, for a second? But when I approach... Sir, where would they be seeing news? There is no thumbs up for me. We stage a little uh, experiment in there to see how people would react to that kind of attitude. You know, I'm American. I am an American. That man took it a bit farther, telling me I'm not an American. He was threatened. Jack DeVidio is a social psychologist at Yale University. So when we as Americans feel threatened from the outside, we're going to define ourselves in very rigid fashions. Either you're with me, and if you're not really one of me, then you must be somebody else who's against me. The young woman in our experiment is an actor. But for this woman, discrimination is all too real. Nahaya Javed helped us design our experiment. Although born in Chicago, she says she's constantly characterized by fellow Americans as the enemy. They always start off with, you're a terrorist, a Sama lover, Towelhead, camel jockey, on and on. 
While attending college in Texas, she says she continually suffered verbal abuse and has even been physically attacked just because she's Muslim. They assume I'm not from here, and if I tell them I'm American, they're like, no, you're not. Just because you were born here doesn't make you American. And I'm like, so what makes you American? It's a daily battle. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like living in America, I should have to fight this battle. Meanwhile, back at the bakery, our actor is at it again. But how do I know you're not a terrorist? Terrorists look like you. But this time, the customers are sympathizing with the Muslim woman. Right, I know, but can you blame me? Yeah, I can't blame you, actually. Why? What's the problem? All right, we'll get out of here. So actually, what you need to do? Okay, sir. Thank I'm you, a sir. good American, all right? We're at war with these people. Yeah, my dad's a better. Go yourself. So is mine. And he's not the only one who walks out in anger. You need to stop segregating against people. It's wrong. Excuse me? She's an American. No, like you're a bad American. American. Time and again, people speak out with their pocketbooks. You hired a couple of customers, just so you know. But look what happens when this man threatens to leave. You're not a good American, sir. I believe I am a good American. My son just came back from serving in the Army for over a year in Iraq, and that has nothing to do with her run. I understand that. Thank you, sir. And I hear what you're saying. But I, 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 mean, can't believe, I can't believe you would, you would be so discriminatory. I'm deeply offended by that. I, I'm sorry to offend you, sir, but I've got to live with myself. Seething, the man vows to fight back. I will let people know this. I've stopped here every time I've come by this place, and I'll never stop here again. Why did folks get so upset? They saw an injustice. It's justice that binds us together. It's justice that makes us a society. Any threat to that kind of sense of justice and fairness undermines the entire system. You're really not no. no, I'm not. Perhaps that's why more customers are outraged by our actors' hateful behavior than approve of it. You're not dressed like an American. I don't but know no one is more persistent than these two young women who can't believe what they're hearing. Take your jihad, take it back out to the parking lot. Excuse me? I mean, I got to protect my customers, okay? You're really offensive and disgusting. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to protect Thank you. you here. Thank you. Thank you. You're sick. Like this is a How do you know? Culture. You These so people are trying to kill Americans. She is my culture, so you're ready to serve me, but you're not ready to serve her. You're obviously dressed like an American. Big deal. You know, She's Muslim. Obviously. And unlike the others, they don't just leave in anger. They stand their ground. So you're going to regulate what people wear? Yes, because I believe the, the degree manager? of... No, I'm not the manager. Well, well, Can I speak to your manager? Please. I'm John Quinones with ABC News. It's only when we catch up with our heroines that they finally let their guards down. I'm with my friend who's, you know, Muslim, and it's, you know, I've just seen um, how people treat them differently, and it really hurts me. Just watching them stand up for what they believe in touches Professor DeVidio. In a way, they defended America, and I was impressed by that because they wanted this to be a just society, a just place, a just bakery. I'm Jack in your office. And remember this man whose son served in Iraq? Okay. He's also moved to tears. <laughs> Every person deserves to be treated with um, respect and dignity. No matter how they're dressed. In situation, no matter how they're dressed. Never have we seen reactions so polarized, from a thumbs up for prejudice to an emphatic thumbs down. Don't yourself. Two different Americas, both convinced they're patriotic. At the end of the day, 13 people stood up for the Muslim woman, while six sided with the clerk. But the majority of the bystanders, 22, did or said absolutely nothing. That's what's most frightening to Muslims like Nahaya, who was watching our experiment. In fact, so frightening that they often avoid going out by themselves. It's really sad because I'm old enough to be able to do things by myself. I shouldn't need a chaperone all the time. But that one time that I'm alone and something bad might happen, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I am Naya. It's no wonder this young woman was so moved by the people who came forward to protect a stranger who just happens to be Muslim. Thank you so much for what you did, and I wish more people would do these type of things. And um, I do too. it would make my life a lot easier. <laughs> I'll go with you.